Hi guys, Aaron Clark here. This is part one of a two-part video series that's going to focus on rendering up some um, some jewellery. This is going to be the example that we're going to use. It's a halo ring, typical style. We've done a hundred of these before. And we're going to have a look at what we can do to make this look good for the final render. Part two of this video series is going to focus on some render specific settings. And depending on what render engine that you use, whether it be uh, Keyshot or V-Ray or Arion or Thea or Octane or Maxwell or any of the you know dozen other uh, rendering engines, um, we're going to sort of focus on some settings which will be applicable throughout those different rendering programs. And uh, hopefully uh, everybody will be able to get something out of it. So like I said, this is uh, part one. And we're going to have a look at the model itself and what we can do to the model before we get to the rendering stage. And you know this is this is fine for production, but if we want it to look nice, we're going to have to do a few different things to it. Uh, one of the things that really grinds my gears is when I see renders and you know the claws are like this, and you know it's not too difficult to come in here, wire cut those claws off. Fill it off the uh, oh, 0.5, it's not going to work. Let's go to 0.4. Fill it off those, those guys there. And you know, already that's a step in the right direction. Let's take that a bit further. Let's bend them over. Uh, again, Z point count, 5, perfect. Cage edit. Again, one of those things that kind of grinds my gears a bit is people not bending these claws over. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to do. So that's just a cage edit. And I've grabbed the top row, top row of points and bent those over. And then the second row of points and bent those over as well. And all of a sudden that's starting to look a bit, a little bit nicer there. Or at least, you know, the claws are bent over the stone, which is what you'd expect to see. Now that we're gonna have two different styles of setting with the, uh, the shank and the halo. The halo plate, we're gonna have the micro claw style of setting. And with the shank, it's going to be the uh, bead style of setting. So I'll focus on the halo first. Now, one thing to note is the gems in the shoulders are block instances. If I type what, then I'm gonna get this pop-up box and we just scroll down and it says valid block instance. Okay, that's fine. I know what I'm doing. I know that they're block instances. These here are also block instances. But when I go and modify these shoulder stones, I don't want to change what these stones here happen are, are doing as well. And I'll show you a little bit later on what I mean by that. But for the meantime, I'm going to explode that block instance and then put 16 back in. Now this way we've got a closed solid poly surface. If I type what? Uh, valid poly surface. Closed poly surface, 120 surfaces. Okay, cool. Uh, and the same with this. Let's explode that. Uh, so again, this is a closed solid poly surface. These are still block instances here, and that's important for uh, when we come to um, sort of seating these down a bit. Uh, okay, so let's put a bit of a fillet on this halo. Round off that edge there, round off that edge there. Let's drop those down a bit. Uh, let's move those in a bit. Cool, something like that. So they're sort of sitting below the surface there. Let's bring in some cutters. And you know, the, the trick I find to to rendering and getting that sort of realism is to have a look at the actual piece, an actual finished piece in the setting style that you're trying to emulate. Have a look at how the set has cut the grooves, how they've split the claws, and that's going to sort of give you a really good idea of, you know, if you can emulate how a setter approaches setting, well then that's going to help you when you um, when you try and basically duplicate or replicate what they're doing. Uh, so I've just dropped in a, uh, some assets here. This is basically going to be my um, scallop cutter, and then this is going to be my claw splitter. So I just want those both in the center there. And let's grab this one first. He can be a little bit shorter. Spin him around. 
let's rotate. Now I keep the my halos tend to be angled at about 15 degrees. So all I've done there is I've just rotated that 15 degrees. Oops. That's 15 degrees in the wrong direction. Uh, so we can go minus 15. And we'll bring that down. And let's align that with that gem. And just do a polar array with the same number as the number of gems. Okay, these probably need to be a little bit bigger. So this is my parent, all the rest of the children. Scale that up a bit. You know, I want to have these tapering in a little bit. So let's just have a bit of a play and sort of get that sitting right. I think I'm okay with that. Maybe down a touch more. Alright, grab the kids, group them, and then just do a boolean difference, and we're left with that. Okay, let's do the same with this. Bring that up. Rotate that 15, de 15 degrees. How many degrees is that? 154. Let's go 15. 15 is good. Alright, bring that down. So that's going to sort of split that split that area there and again if we want to scale that a little bit we can not too essential at this point here group those do a little difference and we've got those claws split cool now we want a bit of a groove 0.7 what's 0.7 0.7 Rotate that, minus 15, and revolve. What's going on there? Revolve. How does that look? Pretty good to me. Difference that out. All right. So that's how the halo's looking. That's looking pretty good to me. And let's grab a prong. Uh, again, I've got a button key to my mouse, so whenever I hit this button, there's a custom pop-up menu. And this is my assets menu. And you can see I've got a whole bunch of different finger sizes, shank profiles, um, some gems there, some cutters and profiles and everything. And it's pretty easy to sort of make your own pop-up menu. So you can just, you know, get your own menu that pops up like a good pop-up menu should. Uh, enough of that. Let's move on with the speed again. 15. Oh, it's trying to trick me there. It wanted me to do minus 15. All right. Get that into place. You want it a bit bigger? A little bit bigger. And we can drag this guy down. You know, you could stop if you wanted it that, but if you render that up, that's going to be, I don't know, kind of janky. I like to put in these little beads here. It just sort of softens the look. I find it quite helpful to sometimes go into a different. Uh, view mode and you know you can sort of get a different idea of or, or sort of look of how things are how things are progressing yeah I'm happy with that and let's go to this basket here and I think this one should be the parent yep all the others follow and again I just want to do a bit of filleting on this so 0.3 fillet 0.3 fillet that looks fine in real life all those edges are going to be softened off Um, that's probably Probably a little bit too much. Fill it. 0.2. Oops, not the gem. So let's take that down a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. Um, all right. So the shank itself is looking like it's going to cut your finger if you pop it on. So let's just put a big heavy fillet on the inside of that. And that's a 0.6 fillet. You know, you could go through and put a proper comfort or a quart fit on the inside, and It'll take a little bit more time for these shanks. I mean, this shank here is only um, 2.3 millimeters wide. Yeah, I'm happy to just put a big fillet on the inside. Uh, let's go ahead and do a fillet here and here as well. And let's approach the grain setting of the shank. So fillet, a little bit smaller on the shank for grain setting. I don't like to round it too much for the grain style of setting. Alright, that's cool. 
Um, and like I said, have a look at how a setter is actually going to mount these. And then what they're going to do is they're going to cut this back. They're going to put a bright cut on it. And that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of replicate that bright cut. And I don't like to have a flat surface underneath the gems. So when I mirror that across, you can see I've, I've basically got this line sort of angling in a little bit. And that's just going to throw the reflection of the light off a little bit and stop it just being a flat reflection, which kind of looks a bit flat. And the back end of this doesn't really matter, so I'll just put an arc, join that up, and rotate that down a little bit. Cool. Uh, let's sink those gems down a bit. Now, like I said earlier, this uh, set of gems is a... Uh, these gems are block instances. And a block instance means that basically if you change one you change them all so i can do things like move this up and go okay and they've all moved up that is why i didn't want these guys here to be block instances because i wanted to be able to mess with these without these doing weird stuff all right so i don't want to move it up i want to move it down a little bit yeah, 1.7 ish yeah, that's good they're sort of like below the surface as they should be and that's fine for now. Let's do a sweep one with that guy. Cool. That's open. So I'm just going to cap it. And again, cut that back on a bit of an angle. Oops. Wire cut with that curve. Wire cut with that curve. Mirror that across and Boolean difference. All right, let's have a look. Yeah, that's pretty much what you want. All right, let's drop in a prong. Now I've double clicked on my block instance, add object. That's the prong. Enter when done. Okie dokie. And then I can move. I'm going to delete that, sorry. Now I've gone out of my block instance. Let's double click that again. Grab that prong, which is part of the block instance. And just play with it a little bit. Cool. And you can see what happens is because we've inserted that prong into our block instances, sorry, into our block instance. Um, all of the other block instances have updated. I feel like I'm saying block instance a lot. All right, let's change this. Move that down a bit. They're sitting a little bit proud. Okie dokie. And how's that look? Yeah, it's cool. That's good enough. I mean, I'm not going to do anything magic at the moment. Um, I mean, it's, it's a deep rabbit hole if you want to go into um, like some serious rendering. Um, but for sort of everyday rendering, this is this is fine. All right, so I've just exploded those block instances, which allows me to sort of duplicate and play with these individual uh, individuals components. Uh, one thing to remember is uh, because these are block instances, you can only apply one material to them, uh, to the best of my knowledge, at, at, at in 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 any, in any case. So obviously we want diamond to be applied to the diamonds and metal bit to be applied to the uh, the pink prongs there. So if that's the case, we're going to have to explode them, which means I can't globally edit these anymore. So I can't do weird stuff. Nothing's going to change because although that's still a block instance, nothing else is. All right, that, that, and mirror. Cool. All right. So that's pretty much all I would do for something like that. Let's grab a ground plane, and again, this is an asset which gets imported in. Let's have a look there. That's sitting a little bit off. Move that up. Let's grab all of that and, and apply. Again, these are just little macros that I've, I've, uh, I've got here. We can go in and edit this, and you can see it's just a visapply material, and that's the name of the, met, the material. Um, if you want to do it a long way, you'd come into your V-Ray editor and grab all your diamonds and uh, diamond force is the one that I use. Right click, apply to selection, and that's all you do. All right, let's have a look and see what this looks like.
All right. Let my computer do its work. It's going to burn through this pretty quick. And we'll see how it looks. Like I said, in part two of this video series, I'm going to have a look at some of the different render settings that we can use. Things like HDRI maps, which give you these sort of reflections here. Um, I'll have a look at the gem and uh, some of the different render settings there. And let's wait for that to finish. It's not going to be too long. I've got a decent computer working on this, so it uh, won't take too long. There it is. Okay. And then, of course, you'd save that and give it to your client or whatever. And like I said, that's that's how I would approach rendering a design like this. And I hope that helps. If anybody's got any uh, further questions or comments, please feel free to contact me and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, and like I said, I hope that helps and I'll see you in the next one.